Guys, we're going to talk today about specialized energy. We're going to talk about John Bedini. And we're going to look at exactly how he's getting it. Now, most of you look at this as a battery charging another battery and don't look twice at it. Please understand, there's a specialized sort of energy going on here. Lately on my channel, we've been talking about high voltage and how you can change volts and amps and heat, and it'll change the actual frequency. It'll also change the volts and amps when you change the frequency. And when you have high volts and low amps, it'll change the frequency to spike and it'll give you reduced heat. Now, with that being said, let's look at John Bedini again. What is he doing? He's creating essentially cold energy. So for those of you who don't understand this whole thing, when you take a circuit and you got a hot side, okay, full of amps over here and it's running, you can then take another side over here and you can make it a cold side. Now, you have to start this thing with some sort of light bulb or something like that in order to pull the cold side out of the hot side. Now, that's a specialized circuit. We can go into it later at some time if you want to. However, just understand that that's what he's doing here. He actually is producing the cold side without the hot side, but, you know, I digress. Let's go into the simple fact that it's cold energy, okay? Now, how is he getting this cold energy? Well, when he creates the energy using a regular ferrite magnet, he's getting energy spikes in this thing. They have a very high voltage. They have a very low heat and they have a very low amperage. When you have low amperage, you have low heat. So as he brings this thing in and he gets the energy to come in, it spikes. As you can see on the bottom right side of the page, I drew two pictures along with telling you guys we're doing a live show on this on Monday. There's an H and there's an N. Basically, he's, the N is the operating of the battery. We don't have to worry about that. He doesn't want any of that. What we're looking for is the little spike right above it. The part that makes the H from the end. That little bit of spike of energy. That's what he's looking for here. That's his cold energy right there. He's telling you extremely clearly when he shows you the master class on how this thing is done. That little spike is all he's looking for. Why? Because he's saying right there it's going from 80 volts up to 100 and something volts or higher. And it's giving you a massive amount of energy. As a matter of fact, I think he said, you know, several hundred volts. But anyway, just so you guys understand it on a basic scale, he's getting more out of that little piece on the top of the H than the whole N is altogether. So, how's he doing it? He's getting the volts to spike. And when he gets the volts to spike without the amps, he has no heat. When you have no heat to a circuit, you have no loss to a circuit. Therefore, you're able to pull a tremendous amount of volts from this entire circuit. He puts in a resistor in this thing so that it will blow as soon as there's too many amps in it or too much heat. He always tells you about the heat. Now, let's just understand this. When you use the wrong magnet here, it's going to be a problem. He's using ferrite magnets, basically fridge magnets. They are giving him the particular energy he's looking for here. Biggest mistake I've seen through watching all the internet videos this week is that they start to use neodymium magnets. And he quite clearly tells you why not to use them. He's using a core that's made up of welding rods. So, what is it? Very small amount of core put together in a circle and... It's multiple rods. What does that do? Heat displacement. He says when you use a bolt in there, it builds up heat inside of it. Yeah, it does because you're building currents inside of it. Currents inside of it gives you amps. Amps is a bad thing. He uses rods for this very reason. He wants to reduce the amount of heat completely in this. Why is an neodymium magnet the worst thing you can use here? It brings up high currents in that core. High currents in that core, like we just said, is heat. That's what he doesn't want. So, he uses a ferrite magnet, which is a much weaker magnet. However, it gives you a very high spike in the amount of energy in the volts, not in the amps. So, 
very specialized form of energy we're starting to build here. When he shows you the process of charging things, this is important, guys. When you want to talk about free energy devices or anything else that you're making as a coil or anything else, you always want to have something that can charge a magnet. And in order to do this, he's making sure it spikes. Now, what is it doing to the battery? It's putting in an amount that's much, much higher without the heat. The heat's going to blow that battery and it's going to make it not function anymore. It can't handle volts and amps at the same time being extremely high. It can also not handle a bunch of ton of amps pushing into it too fast. However, volts are different. They work like static electricity inside of the actual battery. It knocks off anything that's on there that's stuck to the rod that's inside, and it makes the chemical process churn much faster. When you do that, spikes in pure voltage work best. It'll actually charge that battery with a ton of charge. Because of the chemical process, the battery will work as normal and have plenty of amps for you to use on the other side because of the acids inside. It's a complete understanding here. He's building cold energy. Now, with all that said, that's John Bonini's motor. Let's look at the gravity flyer in relation to this. One of the biggest common mistakes that we're doing is the magnets. We understand Alexi uses a specialized magnet. We're not there. We keep using neodymium magnets. We keep talking about the eddy currents that are going on. What we didn't realize is the Tesla coil is putting out cold energy. For those of you who see me do this, I put my finger right on the actual gravity flyer itself while everything's on, and I'm able to touch it, and it burns my finger. Why? We're using cold energy. That's the process in which we need to follow. What ruins cold energy? It's a neodymium magnet. It absolutely kills the one thing we're creating in the gravity flyer and ruins our project. A lot of people make this mistake. I've done it myself several times. I switched my magnets themselves back to just fridge magnets. Now, let me just talk about the magnets real quick so we understand this. When you put a shell around a magnet, you're killing the magnetic field everywhere the shell is. So, any bit of steel or anything like that surrounding your magnets kills the magnetic field. Most people say magnet field goes out everywhere. Not when you shell it. It goes in one direction. We know that the gravity flyer has shielded magnets. Therefore, the direction is only up. So when we do this, we're, if we put in neodymium magnets, we're introducing heat into a cold energy system. Therefore, ruining the cold energy system altogether and putting heat in there. Now... What is it doing? It's fighting your Tesla coil. It's fighting the energy that you're putting in there. You have now tried to overpower your gravity flyer. And you have failed in the whole process of understanding and learning it. You have to identify that there's cold energy going on in the center plate. And that the eddy current from that neodymium magnet is ruining it. You could tell me all day long about the strength of the magnet and how one thing is, you know, one strength and one thing's another. It's completely the wrong process to be understanding in the gravity flyer. We're looking at cold energy, and when you put in neodymium magnets, it ruins that energy. Alexi shows it as the light bulb there on. He touches the frame, the light goes off. Again, this is the process of cold energy. It's very important to start to understand this. John Bedina does this perfectly. He does the circuit. He shows you why you shouldn't use something, why you should use something, and it's a specialized energy spike. Now, a lot of you out there have seen Gerald's coil. Understand this. There is a process going on inside that coil that resembles Bedini itself in the energy he's creating. You should really think about that. Now, I can't say much about that coil right now, and I de oh, it's killing, it's killing me not to. But I want Gerald to get all the respect that he deserves and all the accolades for creating that thing. So I'm going to hold back again. However, 
Now, I know too much about it, and it's killing me inside not to say it. But specialized energy, guys, you got to know it when you see it. You got to put it to the side. You got to understand, hey, there's some kind of process going on here that's not normal. John Bedini manipulated the voltage in order to get this type of energy. We should do the same in high voltage when we look at it. We should manipulate it by the amount of heat that comes out of it. Guys, if I can reduce the heat in this, I can spike that frequency real fast. And does it show proof in John Bedini's work? Yeah, it does. When I tell you it's the H, and he doesn't want the end part of it, he just wants the top part, that little bit of H, that little tiny bit. It's specialized energy, guys. Oh, it's, it's so amazing when you can understand this full concept of energy and what it's doing. Now, in the future, we're going to be able to manipulate this and everybody will understand it because everybody will be taught this is the way the energy goes. I guess I just need to be able to sit down for a little while and write a paper on this so everybody can really understand it. Guys, it's not really my style, but maybe I have to so that I can get everybody on the same page. Manipulating voltage is as easy as understanding heat ruins voltage. It also, the amount of heat brings down your frequency the more that you put it in there. Guys, in the gravity flyer, we're looking for frequency spikes and we're looking to hit the biggest one that we possibly can. What happens when I'm negating that with my neodymium magnet? I, I, I'm just kicking myself. That's all I'm doing. I, I'm not... I'm not getting ahead. I'm getting behind. I, I'm making something so wrong in this thing that it's ruining the whole project. I'm not getting the spike in energy that I want. I'm not getting that full force. It won't matter how much power I put in the testicle if I can't learn this lesson. If I can't learn to spike this energy like Bedini does, there's no hope of this thing coming off the ground. You see, when we start talking about putting a million volts into this, Please understand if John Bedini is pulling out 600 volts and then he says that 80 or 90 volts is what your N value is, then the top of the H value is what? I think he said like 600 volts. I could be mistaken. It could be three. Whatever it is, it's a high amount of volts compared to the amount of amps in it. And he's getting this with simple magnets. Now, understand this in the gravity fire. We need a multiplier for energy. You have to have it. No matter how much you put into it, you must have a big multiplier. Guys, this is the multiplier. Cold energy is our multiplier. It's what's going to make it so much better for us with so much more. Guys, this is going to be one of the hardest things to understand if you can't understand the energy difference and how things change. I'm trying to introduce this slowly in showing you the high voltage. Now we're showing it normal voltage. Now we're looking at the amount of the actual magnets and what's going on here. It's a whole flow. So just understand it this way. If I got neodymium magnets in there now, and I get an energy pickup in this device now, just understand this. I am leaving probably... 600 times that amount on the table. 600 times that amount. That's what I'm missing. Maybe it's, you know, 300 times that amount. Maybe it's a little less. I, I don't know. I just know that I have a big pile of energy here I'm not using. Okay? I'm this big pile, giant pile, not using. Because I'm negating the fact that it's cold energy and I'm putting heat into it which ruins cold energy. That's kind of the point here, guys. No matter how your math works out, if I want to get to a million volts in this thing, I have to understand the simple energy that goes in here. That's why John Bedini is so important. He's building a specialized energy. He's telling you how he's doing it, and he's telling you the reason he's doing it, and he's also telling you what heat does to the circuit. Guys, I can't make this any clearer than I did. I hope that you guys understand it. When you do, when it clicks in your mind, you'll understand why I changed my magnets on my gravity flyer to regular, you know, earth magnets 
So little regular ferrite magnets, fridge magnets, if you want to call them that. And it has to do with the cold energy inside the gravity fire. There's others that have already figured this out. And I guess I'm just behind in the party. And I won't make the same mistake twice. I am going to get that spike to spike even harder. For those of you who know, I'm working on the gravity fire about the Tesla coil. And I'm looking to switch the energy going into it. Man, how much more energy can I get if I have that thing spiking at the right value with the right magnets now? I mean, how much more? Do I need a massive more Tesla coil? Probably not. Do I need one that flips between the two energies of, you know, a low value and a high value? Absolutely, I do. It's, it's taking a part of the circuit that flows in this whole thing, and I'm s segregating that part of it. And by doing that, I'm able to manipulate it. Now, I only do this with the understanding of what's going on in the whole thing. I do not try to spike every single thing in this. A lot of people keep telling me to change the parts in this. You know, change to a copper plate, change to a, um, a steel plate. You know, you get more magnetism. You get, you get more currents through another. The whole thing about this is balance, guys. It's can you create multiple things in balance with one another. That's kind of the trick of the gravity flyer. It is all in balance. The guy who built it is a genius. Okay. He's manipulating all of this stuff. And if you just look at it and go, oh, well, I can put some voltage in and maybe it'll do something. Well, you got a long way to go. You got a long way to go to get anti-gravity. And whatever device you're working on is never going to work until you understand this. Guys, I chose this device. It gives you everything that you want in anti-gravity, but it teaches you to keep everything in balance. And when you can do that, you're going to achieve something great. And I hope very soon we're going to achieve something great. Guys, I'm getting it almost to hit the rest of the way in my hand. I've almost got it back. And let me tell you something, strict diet, change everything I do, because I don't ever want to feel this way again. I get really tired of it. So, anyway guys, that's the understanding of the Bedini versus the Gravity Flyer and why things are done. I hope you guys learned something good out of this. If you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you. You've got to be creative when you're dealing with these this type of energy you I only have this or I only have that so what am I going to do am I just going to stand there and do nothing and say it doesn't work well that's what most do you know but I'm not going to do that see I'm going to find a way to get the power out of something through whatever means I have to use to get it because after all I don't have any energy now and the lights are up I need to charge this battery. <laughs>